sketch the graph of the function f of x equal to sine of x plus cosine of x on the closed interval from 0 to 2 pi. So we have our checklist of items that we go through when we graph a function. So let's work that out. First, the domain. Since sine of x and cosine of x are defined at all x, our domain is going to be all real numbers. But then we note we're only told to sketch our function from 0 to 2 pi. So the domain is from 0 to 2 pi, including the endpoints. Next, we can look for zeros of our function. So if I set our function equal to 0, we're solving for sine of x equal to minus cosine of x. And now we note sine is the y value in the unit circle. Cosine is the x value in the unit circle. So I'm looking where the line y equal to minus x intersects the unit circle. So if we draw the picture, it's going to look like that. And we notice that our x are going to be the angles 3 pi fourths and 7 pi fourths. So those are going to be our zeros. So if we draw the graph in, we're going to have this point here, 3 pi fourths, which is just shy of pi, and then 7 pi fourths, which is just shy of 2 pi. Now, if I want a few more points, we should do the endpoints. So if I put 0 into my function, I'm going to get 1 out. If I put 2 pi into there, I'm also going to get 1 out. So those will be these points on the end. We've done everything that we can do without taking a derivative. So let's do that and hunt for critical points increasing and decreasing. I take our derivative. That gives me cosine x minus sine of x. Now. That's going to be defined everywhere, so we'll never have undefined. So our only critical points can arise if the derivative is equal to 0. So we want to solve cosine of x equals sine of x. Now, the picture for this is going to be, we take our unit circle, we're going to take the line y equal to x, and we're going to find the points where that line hits the unit circle. Why is that? Well, remember, cosine is the x value in the unit circle, Sine is the y value in the unit circle, so where they're equal will be where y is equal to x. We know those points, that's going to be x equal to pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So those are going to be our two critical points, meaning we'll have horizontal tangent lines at pi fourths and 5 pi fourths. We want to plot those points, so we stick them back into the original function. Now note, if I stick them into the derivative, I'm going to get 0 because that's why we solve for those points in the first place. So I put them into the original function. What do I get? For pi fourths, we're going to have square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. That's the cosine and the sine. We add them together. So we get square root of 2 for our answer. At 5 pi over 4, what are we going to have? Cosine and sine are both going to be minus square root of 2 over 2. So when we add them together, we get minus square root of 2. I plot those points, so it's going to be up there. You notice horizontal tangent line, and then at 5 pi fourths, which is right here, again, another horizontal tangent line. Now let's look for increasing and decreasing. So what do we do? I draw a box in. I mark off our critical points, pi fourths, 5 pi fourths. We're going to check a point in each region, put it in the derivative. The sine is positive that comes out. We're increasing. On the whole region, it comes out negative, we're decreasing on the whole region. So the three points I'm going to pick are 0, pi, 3 pi halves. Okay, I can use 0 because note, our function is actually defined everywhere. We've just confined it to 0 to 2 pi. The derivative will be defined everywhere if we let it. So that's going to mean if I can find that our endpoint is in a region of increasing for the big function, when I confine it to 0 and 2 pi, it's still going to have that same region of increasing. So 0 is going to be perfectly good for a check for increasing and decreasing in this case. Now, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to put our points in. Let's see what comes out. So cosine minus sine, I put 0 in, 1 comes out. So we're increasing here. Cosine minus sine, I put pi in. We get a minus 1, so we're decreasing here. Cosine minus sine, 
we put three pi halves in, okay, what happens? Cosine zero, sine of three pi halves is minus one, but there's a minus one on that, so I get a plus one. So that's gonna be increasing over here. So that's increasing and decreasing. Next, we move on to inflection points and concavity. So we're gonna take the second derivative. What are we gonna get? We're gonna get minus sine x minus cosine of x. So notice, this is minus our original function. Why is this useful? Because if I wanna know where my second derivative is equal to zero, those zeros will be the same as the zeros for the original function. We've already found those. Those are gonna be at our three pi fourths and our seven pi fourths. So I can mark them off. Now, check a point in each region against a second derivative that's positive or negative, that's gonna tell us the concavity. So what can we use here? So I'm gonna use the points, pi halves, pi, and two pi. We put our points into our function, so just negative the original function. So we're gonna get four pi halves, I'm gonna get a minus one, so we're concave down here. For pi, we're gonna have a plus one, so we're concave up here. And then at two pi, we're gonna get a minus one, so concave down here. So now I just wanna connect the dots as we go through each region. So where do we start? So we know we have a point at one, we know we have a point at pi fourths squared to two. So we're increasing and concave down as we go there, so that's gonna go up like this. For my next region, we're gonna be decreasing and concave down, so that's decreasing concave downs like that, so that goes like this. For my next region, decreasing concave up, so that's like that. Next region, increasing concave up, so it's increasing concave up, so that's like that. And then finally, increasing concave down, so that's gonna be like that, and then I connect everything back to the point with value one at two pi. So that's gonna be my graph of sine of x plus cosine x.